Boo! Haha, <laughs> better scared you. No, not really. Okay, what we've got here is uh, a little bit of tidying up work to do. You hate it, does this so much. Just gonna clean this up. Oops. Gotta make sure I've actually got something that I can see selected. Otherwise, it means I've demolished something at the front that uh, really shouldn't have been demolished. Oops, like that. Notice I'm always going back and just checking my model over because we're going to have a lot of iterations on this. Not iterations, a lot of copies of this rather. And uh, if we don't keep tabs on it now, then when you've got 5,000 copies of all your buildings, there's a massive array, then it's going to get a bit messy, to be honest. Oh, there's two there. And we really don't need these polygons. As long as we've got one line left, we're fine. There we go, one line to each. Now, flip it around. There's a Z for zoom. Now, what we've got to do is build the section which allows people to board the two uh, cabins here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, a bit clever, you know? So, what I'm going to do is select this. And, you know, this is about the right height, I think. Yeah, it seems about right. Strange how it's tilted forward like that. Oh, I see, I did that. Ha <laughs> stupid Chris. I'm going to select here and here. Let's do a quick connect. Right, select this piece as well. Now, what I want to do is extrude this back, like so. And I'm going to go to my left viewport and do this. Press F3. Reason being, I want it to line up with that line there, can you see? Just here. Click apply. And there. And then I'm just going to pull it back. Okay. Drop the perspective. Now, you know, why have I done that? Well, there's no great mystery to it really. What I need to do is connect this bit and this bit so that I can give the impression that people are boarding the escape capsule. So, Let's take out some of these areas now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Delete them both. Now select this area here as a border, and this area here is a border. Go to the bridge tool, and if I look, there we go, it's bridged together. So I can now click OK. Now, because I've already got both these areas selected, this is going to save me a little bit of time anyway. I'm just going to into line select mode and select there, and there, and there, and there, because we don't need to select those parts. I'm also going to select here, oops, got to make sure I get this bit right. Have I got to ignore back facing off? Yeah, of course I have. There we go. Turn that one on. Gotta be so careful what I'm selecting for the chamber. Okay. Just gonna do these top ones here. Hopefully you're seeing how this is starting to come together and why I chose to design it in this manner and so on. Let's have three. Oops, not one. Let's three again. Oops, it's easy. So I'm just getting all these selected. I'm going to do a chamber. That 0.01 should be enough. I said 4 if I'm not sure. And there, you can see how it's all holding together now. Got our big bolts at the back there, which is cool. Okay, we're going to concentrate now on this inner area here, because we need to have something as well that's going in for the uh, train here. And we need to give the impression that this door's kind of shut. Now, to do that, it's quite simple. 
I'm going to take a line down the side of here. And this will be our kind of loading blast door thing. If I can ever get it to select. There we go. Do a connect. Now I'm going to use my tool here just to flatten it. There we go, nice and flat. And pull to there. So what I'm going to do now is just chamfer this out. And this will give us our kind of blast door uh, hole, I suppose. Now then, go down here. I'm sure you've seen me create things similar to this before. I'm going to bevel it. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to do a tiny insert. Extrude it back out again, just till I get to about there. And do a little bevel on it. Just like that. There we go. And that becomes our blast door. It's not even really noticeable. It's just, you know, if people are looking for it, they'll go, I And then you can go, well, there's the blast door. Je suis la blast door. Okay, quick bevel here. Okay, now I'm going to extrude this back and uh, I'm going to do it once and then, you know, just to here. And I'm not going to chamfer that, there's just no point. I'm not planning on using this piece at all anyway. I'm going to just delete it if I want. But I'll keep it up though. Okay, now I'm going to select this bit and loop it. Deselect to the bottom and at the top. Go in. And just deselect these pieces as well. Okay, now I'm going to chamfer this out. And select all the polygons inside it. Quick bevel in. Extrude back just a little bit. Insert it just a tiny bit. I'm going to extrude it straight out like this. I'm going to come by and just use the move button here. Just to the point where it connects to there. Now I can uh, select by edge, control, go by edge, chamfer. Okay, and now press F4, we've got a nice simple blast door in place there, which I can rivet to my heart's content. When we get to part four. Okay, now over here, um, because these go inside the rock, I can afford to put some safety rails in place. And you know, I really do feel concerned at the safety of our little people who will be using our exciting escape system. So again, I'll just use a box this time to represent. Standard object, box. I'm going to make a 1.5, sorry, 1.6 meter height box, like that. Okay, so with this thing at this height, I can now work out exactly how high my safety guide rails are supposed to be. And what I'm going to do is start the cylinder. And I'm going to make it just 16 sides. And I'm going to bring this up to around about here. Don't it too big? Just a nice small rail. We want it around about mid chest height for extra safety. Height segments one. There we go. Convert to edible poly. And I'm going to bring out some copies of this. Around about like this. There we go. Two. Okay, it's time to get there. Now, turning angle snap on by pressing A and using the rotate. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Control. So shift, rotate, there we go, 90 degrees, click OK. Now I'm going to move it up, one to there, and then another one to about there, click OK. And on the top there I'll put uh, something slightly different. Now because these aren't long enough, I'll just use my attach tool, and I'm going to grab these end vertices here. And just pull them all the way until they get to about there. 
just before they connect. Zoom in. And just use my bevel tool. Fit onto there like that. I'll turn my bevel tool off and turn off my select tool. And I'm just going to use my attach tool again. Okay, it's time to get there. Now, over here, it's a slightly bigger piece, so I'm going to create another cylinder. I'll attach this in a minute, so I'm not even going to bother giving it a cunning name. There we go. Right click, convert to oval poly. Got angle snap on still, so I'll just flip this over 90 degrees. I'm going to bring that back to about there. Zoom in on it. And I'll use my cut tool from about here to here. Select, delete, select, inch from edge, oops, inch from edge, pick my hinge, angle, 180 degrees, and then I can decide how many segments to use, one, two, three, four, I think five segments should, six segments should be enough actually, there we go, gives us a nice rounded end, click OK. Delete. Now select all these verts here, just weld it shut, 7467. See what I mean? Now grabbing this piece, I'm going to bring it all the way along to here. Zoom in. We'll get nice and close this time. Okay, it's just a case of doing a little bit more. And attach. There we go. So now we've got this nice secure rail thing going on. And we can do some attaching. Like that. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Now, because I've already got these pieces selected anyway, I mean, as part of our mesh, if I grab this one and this one, go to our front viewport, I can get their height spot on for what I need. Just move them to here, clone into an element. Start moving them to the each edge. One there, one there. Perspective. Now, the minute they're hovering in outer space, see how that's sorted. There. Now just check those over. And I think for this one I'm going to be slightly more cunning than I was before. And uh, my god, I was pretty cunning last time. So I'm going to select this polygon here and I'm just going to shift clone it 90 degrees. Like that. Clone to an element, and I'm going to move my element just along here, a tiny bit. It's fun doing stuff this way, by the way. Now I'm going to extrude it until we get to about there. And then when we get to there, I'm going to extrude it a little bit further on, I think. There we go. Now I need to do a um, hinge from edge on this, so I'll make a copy of this over here, go into element, zoom in on it, we'll cut from there down to there. Don't worry, everything I do will make sense, I promise. Right, so now we've got this half polygon sitting doing nothing. I'm going to select this, hinge from edge, pick my hinge, it's going to be this one, angle. 90 degrees, segment 9, click it OK, and it's now going in the right direction. 
Let me extrude it. Bring it back till we get to around about there. Click OK. Zoom on it and turn it around. Quick bevel. There we go. Didn't even need to do that last bit. Okay, so we've got this one piece here. Now I'm going to get rid of this floating bit here. And with this selected, actually I'm not going to copy this yet because uh, the end's a little bit sharp and it hasn't been capped off yet. I'll just cap that and then I'm going to chamfer it just a tiny bit as well. There we are. Excellent. Now with this selected, I can do this again. Turn into elements, and again. Okay, pull back. Press F4, and you can see now we've got this really nice, complicated little station coming together here. We still haven't put a pile of detail on, and I've still got a little bit of work left to go in here. I'm going to press F4, and at the floor here. Select this by polygon, do an inset, and move these over here a little bit because we're going to create ourselves an information terminal. It saves us having to add these later as props because then they are visible, which is useful. Now we know that the head height of the chaps around here, so the terminal height should be around about there. So I'm just going to bevel it first, straight out the floor. I'll have to go back and do some additional beveling soon, but that's not a problem. So I'm going to move it to there. I'm going to move it up again to about there. Now I'll grab my edge. And move my edge in on oop, on one. The y-axis. That. And here's our screen here, so I'm going to insert it. Bevel it in. It's very easy just to you know project a bitmap and then we'll alert alert flashing on that if you really needed one. Now I'm going to set my edge here. Loop. No, don't want to loop it actually. Zoom in. Select this one and this one. Just go around and make sure we've got the right pieces. This is one of the complexities involved in having modelled quite a big piece like this. Just as like one object. However, it does make it a lot easier when it comes to, you know, mass producing. Okay, quick chamfer. Lovely. Zoom out. So now we've got our data terminal at the back there, telling people which way to go. And I quite like to put a little bit more tertiary detail just in here. So if I grab this, oops. And I'll do an inset. Okay. And I'm going to bevel this in. Bring it back. Flatten it. Deselect these middle ones. Nice and nice little text to put in this, perhaps, just to you know denote some pipe work or something. I'm not going to put a million tons of pipe work in. I know I usually do, but uh, I don't want you know a hundred thousand polygons just for this one piece. It's just uh, I know I'm chamfering, but that's because it's not a low poly game model. If you want to use this for a game, don't chamfer, okay? And don't use as many polys. <laughs> kind of basic one there. Okay, I'm going to get rid of our friend Lurch the block. So I say four. You can see everything's working there. Nice, happy, happy. I certainly am. Okay, uh, what do we need to do with this now? Oh, incidentally, I did steal some of the idea for this from uh, Starship Troopers when Cartman's getting on her shuttle to go to the Navy Academy. I really like the shuttle they had in there. But obviously, there's not as many windows because this is supposed to be a kind of ejection capsule that buries itself through a series of tunnels deep in the map, deep in the uh, mines. Okay, now I'm going to say we're done with uh, this, our part three, and I'm going to go on to part four, so see you in a minute.